I can't believe you bought such shabby flowers for my classes. You should know by now that I need expensive looking but cheap flowers. You are still useless after all these years. My mother-in-law slammed the flowers onto the floor. By the way, thanks to your useless help, the student numbers in my school are declining. I want you to make flyers and recruit more students. Don't even think about coming home until you have at least 30 new students. She always took it out on me no matter what the problem was. It was always my fault. I just smiled and said, Okay, I understand. Then, I never returned to her school. My name is Lucy. I am a housewife in my 50s. My only son has graduated, college, found a job, and lives by himself. I got married at the age of 20. It was an arranged marriage. My husband, Jerry, is a common office worker. He has not made any remarkable achievements on the job, but thanks to his company's seniority system, he earns enough money to support a family of two. I used to have a part-time job at a supermarket to help pay tuition for my son's college, but I don't do that anymore. My mother-in-law, Hazel, runs a flower arrangement school. I was a perfect free laborer for her. Not only does she use me for free, but if there is any problem, she blames it on me. Once my son was grown and moved away, Hazel became even harsher to me. I had to get up very early every morning to do everything she expected of me. I got up before sunrise to prepare breakfast for my husband. After that, I drove a van to a market to buy flowers for Hazel's flower arrangement school. I wish that I could just buy them at a flower shop nearby, but Hazel ordered me to drive to a bigger market to save money. She gave me very little money to buy the flowers, but she demanded quality, variety, and many other specifics. So, I tried hard to negotiate prices at the market and always looked to see if they had any excess or leftovers. As soon as I purchased the flowers, I treated them so they would stay fresh longer. I rushed to my home after that so I could serve breakfast to my husband. Immediately after finishing the house chores, I would bring the newly bought flowers to Hazel's school. Then I would clean the classroom before the students arrived. Next, I would drive to pick up my mother-in-law and bring her to the school. She lives in a mother-in-law unit on the same property as our house. We used to all live together in the mother-in-law unit, and Jerry's grandparents lived in the big house. After my husband's grandparents passed away, Jerry and I moved into their house and Hazel stayed in the mother-in-law unit. While Hazel was getting ready to leave her house in the morning, I would do all her house chores, watering plants, washing dishes, laundry, etc. Even after her class started, I was not allowed to go home. I had to do all the miscellaneous tasks related to running the flower arrangement school. Sometimes, her school would let out in the morning. Those were my lucky days. When there were more than two classes per day, it felt like hell. She often skipped lunch when she didn't want it. Then, I had to skip my lunch also. After the classes were over, I would drive her home. But my day did not end there yet. She usually made me stay till midnight to listen to her complaints. She once taught flower arrangement classes at her house, but now, she rents out a room at the community center for that. Even after Hazel would finally let me go, my husband was waiting at home, fuming. Jerry got angry when I wasn't home. He wanted me waiting for him at home, ready to serve him. How could you come home later than the man of the house, was his frequent question. It's not my mom's fault. It's your fault since you are so slow at doing everything, would be his frequent answer to his own question. Where's my dinner? 
Is my bath ready? Bring me tea, were also frequently spoken by him. We had a nice jacuzzi tub in our bathroom for him. It was all automated, just press a button. It had advanced temperature control settings, but he wouldn't even press a button to start a jacuzzi, not even once. At dinner time, I sometimes asked him to bring his dishes to the kitchen sink after he was done, but he never would because he said he was either too tired or too busy to do so. He would just leave everything on the table. Moreover, he never put his dirty clothes in a laundry basket. His clothes were just scattered on the floor. I had to pick them up every day and do laundry after I took a bath. I used a clothes dryer since I was never home during the day to dry laundry outside. I had asked my husband to bring laundry in from outside, but my mother-in-law got very upset at me for asking her son to do housework. But an angry Hazel was better than a sly, sneaky one. If I ever talked back to her, she would use a spare key for my house that she made without my permission to steal my personal belongings so she could sell or break them. She enjoyed harassing me. She didn't think I noticed what she had been doing, but I did. I didn't have too many personal items since I got married so young. My husband, Jerry, believed a wife should stay home and wait for her man. He thought I didn't need anything nice, no fancy outfits or cosmetics. He had never gifted me a single piece of jewelry in our married life. My parents, on the other hand, sent me birthday presents every year. Those items from my parents were precious to me, so I noticed immediately if my mother-in-law took it away or broke it. My mother-in-law believed the world revolved around her. She believed that her flower arrangement skills were world-class, but in my opinion, her skills were adequate at best. Her flower arrangement style was gaudy and flashy. She destroyed her flower's grace and beauty by cramming as many flowers and colors as possible into each arrangement. She also didn't know the very basics of handling fresh flowers. She would throw away any leftover flowers at the end of the day. There were many flowers that were still buds, but she tossed them all out regardless of their condition. We buy new ones tomorrow, she would say. That always made me sad. Those flowers were not grown to be thrown into a trash can by my mother-in-law. The sight of the still beautiful flowers in the trash pained me. A real florist could use any of those leftover flowers, I believed. Hazel was still clinging onto her one and only glorious win at a flower arrangement competition a long time ago. She had entered flower arrangement competitions many times, but that was the only award she had ever won. She was so proud of the award that she mentioned it any chance she got. I wondered if there was no other entry in the competition when she won. Her flower arrangement style was that bad. She also didn't seem to know how to teach. I didn't know whether she didn't know how to teach or she didn't want to teach. Whatever she told her students didn't make much sense. Okay, I'll leave the rest to you, said Hazel, getting ready to leave the class. Mother, are you leaving in the middle of the class again? I asked. I've already taught them the essence of the flower arrangements. The rest must be created by the students themselves. Don't you know that? You've been working as my understudy for so many years. You are such a slow learner for just about everything. Hazel would leave her own class after giving an assignment to her students. She simply took off to kill time until her students were done with their assignments. Some people in the class did not understand the assignment that Hazel gave to them. Some people took their assignments too seriously, and they didn't know where to start. It became my job to help them understand what Hazel said, or to give them appropriate suggestions, 
when they were stuck in their creative processes. However, Hazel had no idea I was helping her students while she was gone. She believed that I had no knowledge of flower arrangement techniques and styles. So when she came back after wandering around and saw her students' flower arrangements, she thought that her amazing teaching skill was the reason that they were doing so well. Oh, your arrangement is wonderful. This is the proof of my amazing teaching skills. She would say proudly. You have come so far. You should thank me for your achievement, she would tell her students seriously. Her students often didn't know what to say, since Hazel never taught them anything. But Hazel was happy to take all the credit. Hazel had no clue that some of her students were not happy with her. I was sure there were quite a few students who thought my mother-in-law was a fool, including myself. Some people were probably laughing at her behind her back. Despite my very busy schedule, I still found time to do the thing I loved. I had started doing this before I got married. It gave me peace and serenity in my hectic life and let me forget all the things related to Hazel. It was dear to me. My mother-in-law's flower arrangement school was divided into three levels, beginner, intermediate, and advanced, consisting of 12 lessons each. Most students started at the beginner level and advanced up and then graduated, so she always had to find new students to enroll. Otherwise, there would be no students left after the existing students graduate. Her school used to be more popular. She taught three or four classes a day, and even offered evening classes. But the number of students later decreased drastically. Most days, there were no potential students inquiring about the classes. Lucy, it's your fault that we are not gaining new students lately. Look at those shabby, cheap-looking flowers you bought. Nobody wants to do flower arrangements with such dingy flowers. How long have you been buying flowers at the flower market? You should have built good connections at the market to buy better flowers at discount prices by now. You are so useless. Do you have anything you live for? Hazel asked accusingly. I am sorry, mother, I said. If you have time to apologize, then you have time to recruit more students for my school. Make flyers to give out at the train station. Shoo, shoo, get to work. Do we have flyers, mother? I asked. You are so dumb. You make flyers with the computer. You are younger than I am, so it should be as easy as pie. I'll give you five minutes to type, ten minutes to print them out. Don't even think about coming home until you recruit 30 new students to my school. I had no choice but to obey the order. I found a free online template to fill in and printed out the flyers, but I went over the time limit she had specified. She shooed me out before I finished, printing out what I needed. Go, go get new students. I don't want to look at your gloomy face. I told you, I need 30, 30 new students. Do you hear me? Yes, I understand, I said with a smile. Even your smile is shabby, but it's better than your normal gloomy face. Hazel said. Hazel, of course, thought I would be standing at the train station, recruiting new students for her school. But I didn't go to the train station. Instead, I went home, to gather my personal belongings. I was not coming back. My parents had been telling me that, I could come home any time. I wanted to go home to them, but I thought I should try harder to keep my family together. I didn't want to give up that easily. I wanted everything to work out. 
Now, however, I was done with raising a child. My job as a mother was finished. Now nothing would stop me from leaving my marriage and my mother-in-law. I accepted my parents' kind offer to escape from my marriage and everything else that came with it. Looking back, my marriage had been set up by a person who enjoyed being a matchmaker. I had not been interested, but she had pleaded with me to just sit at the table and meet the guy. I felt bad saying no to her after she had set this up for me. It's just a matchmaking meeting, no obligations, I thought. To our surprise, the guy and his family really liked me. People told me that I should marry him. They said that it was more important for him to like me than for me to like him. My mother-in-law, when I think of it, was just looking for a daughter-in-law who could work for her, like a maid. By the time I figured that out, I was already pregnant. I didn't want to raise a child without a father. That was the only thing that allowed me to endure more than two decades of unhappy marriage. My son was now grown up and living on his own. This was my chance to free myself from my husband and his mother. There was no need to put up with them anymore. My parents offered to let me stay at their house, but it had been more than 30 years since I left there. I felt that I should be independent. I still wanted to live close to my aging parents, so I have been looking for a decent apartment in their neighborhood. I stayed with them for a little while to recover from my exhausting marriage, then moved into a new apartment. After my move, I was relaxing at my new apartment when I noticed that I had received a large number of texts and emails from my husband and his mother. I hadn't noticed as I had silenced my phone while moving. Well, even if I hadn't silenced the phone, I would not have answered any of them. They were just nuisances to me. I knew what they said, without reading them. While I was about to delete all of their messages, my parents texted, saying, Your husband and his mother is at our house. I went over to my parents' house to face off with Jerry and Hazel. What kind of wife would leave her husband alone at home? Come back right away. Jerry yelled. He grabbed my arm and tried to drag me out of my parents' house. Let me go. It hurts. I will sue you if you leave a mark on my arm. I yelled back. I can't believe what you are saying. You are so pathetic. Just like a little child. You need someone who can teach you how to behave like a wife, Hazel said. Jerry and Hazel kept saying that I needed to go back to their house. I told them I would not. Then Hazel told me what an awful wife I had been. Is this something that you saw on TV? Oh, maybe the news reports we watched the other day? It was like... Wives run for their lives from sketchy husbands or something like that, Jerry said sarcastically. My son is a wonderful, decent human being. Don't say anything crazy. Hazel screamed. I am serious. I want a divorce. I've already filled in my section of the divorce papers. Please sign, Jerry. I showed the divorce papers to Jerry. Then, my mother-in-law growled. You can't live by yourself. You have no job and no skills. You should be thankful to my son for keeping you fed and housed for years. My husband chimed in. You are an old little maid. You are like a parasite. You are good for nothing. Someone has to keep you alive. I have been taking care of you for 30 years. Haven't you figured that out that you can't live without me? You should be grateful to me. He roared. Then, Jerry and Hazel started laughing at me. 
I think you two are the ones who are incompetent, colon, I said and showed them my bank statement. I saved $215,000 while you two were using me for free labor. I am sure that I can make a quite fine living for a while, don't you think? Do you still think I am your parasite? You? I thought the quality of my food has been bad lately. You must have been stealing from the household budget. Jerry barked. You have some nerve stealing from us. I chose the wrong wife for my son. Hazel sighed. Excuse me. I don't even understand how you can think that way. You two are such narcissistic jerks. I said. I had been recycling the flowers thrown away by my mother-in-law for my own original flower arrangement projects. I had been carefully reviving those unwanted flowers to make flower arrangements to display in our neighborhood hospitals, public facilities, and shopping malls for free. I just wanted to share the beautiful flowers that always brought joy into my life with others. To tell you the truth, my family has a long history of professional flower arrangement teachers. My parents are both grandmasters of flower arrangement. Some of my relatives are professional floral designers. So, I grew up surrounded by beautiful flowers since birth. The world of flower arrangement has always been a part of my identity, especially once I became old enough to help with my mother's flower arrangements. Since then, my knowledge of and skill in flower arrangement has deepened. When I think of it, my family pedigree was what grabbed the matchmaker's attention. Hazel and Jerry wanted a woman who had some knowledge of flower arrangement so she could help at Hazel's school. I was the match. The mistake Hazel made was that she did not check my flower arrangement skill before Jerry married me. She assumed I didn't have much talent in flower arrangement. While I was displaying my flower arrangements for free in my neighborhood, people started asking if I was for hire. The first few paying customers were acquaintances, but word spread fast. My work has been displayed and seen by many at the city hall and community centers. People who saw my work at those public places went back to their hometowns and offered me more jobs. The wedding ceremonies became the main income for my business. Not only I did do the flower arrangement at weddings, but I also arranged beautiful bouquets for many many happy brides. My life and money was controlled by my husband and his mother for most of the past 30 years, but I saved little by little from the work I did in my spare time. Now, I had enough money to live by myself without Jerry and Hazel. I want a divorce. If you don't let me, I will crush you, I said. What do you mean crush us? You have no power, my husband laughed. I will sue you and your mother. You and your mother harassed me for so many years. I will demand reparation from both of you, I said. Harassment? I was giving you my attention. You were such a needy person. He said. We will see, don't you think I have recorded our conversations and interactions? You? But I never gave you any money. Money. Your savings. Jerry gasped. Thanks to my money-making side gig, I was able to buy high-quality recording equipment. The recordings clearly show everything you said or did. I also told them that there is a video and pictures of Hazel breaking my personal items. Your mother will have a criminal record if I report her. Do you want that to happen? I know, you call for your mama in your dreams. I recorded it. 
Do you want me to share the recording among your coworkers? What do you want to do? In the name of justice, I will punish you. Decide now, what do you want me to do? I used a line that I learned from a TV program while I was staying with my parents. It felt good to get things off my chest. Jerry was actually just a coward. What I said really scared him. He signed the divorce papers, half crying. I made him divide all of our assets in half too. Guess what happened to Hazel's flower arrangement school after I left? Every single student left and came to my flower arrangement school, which I had recently opened. I don't blame them. Hazel didn't teach them anything. I was the one who was doing any actual teaching at Hazel's school. The students knew what was going on. Hazel's huge pride did not let her see the reality. She didn't want to admit that she was not a good teacher, even after every student left her school. But I was no longer there to take the blame, so she blamed everything on Jerry. It was all your fault. If only you didn't marry her. She tore my pride into shreds. She took all my students from me. You have to take responsibility for all this. She was mad at her son. What? You were the one who wanted her to be my wife, you old hag. Just shut up. My coworkers are laughing at me, saying my wife ran away. The family feud between Jerry and Hazel lasted for days. Since neither of those two ever did housework, it didn't take long for their houses to turn into huge dumps. I heard all that through the grapevine. My new flower arrangement school is doing very well. It happened to appear on a TV program that was featuring my neighborhood. After the exposure, my school was often featured in magazines and TV programs. My school always welcomes everyone. I am so happy now, surrounded by beautiful flowers and wonderful people, and, of course, I make a great living from it.